Um, I don't think it's as bad as like the internet made it out to be. Like it's the worst thing ever. But is it good either? No. It's a very weird movie because it does, to me, flat out terrible is it has like nothing redeeming about it, right? Like it's not that. The Joker 2, because for those I saw it, The Joker 2 is, it has good cinematography, like it has really good acting. It's just like a really bad script. Like you can see the talent, like Lady Gaga is a talented actor. Joaquin uh, Phoenix is a talented actor. It's just the, the plot is not good. It's stupid. It's like, why does this movie exist? And then as I've done my research, from my understanding, the director didn't want to do another movie and kind of Warner Bros or whoever Hollywood forced him to do it. And it shows it's, it's a movie that I've always argued shouldn't exist. Um, let's see. Heard it retreaded a lot of the shot things shot in the first movie. Um, not really, because the first movie is more about mental health and loneliness. Yeah, I guess it, like the mental health stuff, like slight spoilers. I'm not going to spoil like the whole movie if you haven't seen it, but the whole movie takes place like with the Joker being in court. And it was just like, ugh, what was the point of this? You know, it takes place directly after the first movie. So no, because the first movie, it explores more themes of like loneliness and mental health. It explores mental health, but it's more so of like it's exploring what he did in the last movie. But that concept of like loneliness leading to certain things is not there because Harley's there. Uh, I agree with that statement. You said, LOL, wait, what? I'm going to be honest. Fuck that movie. I don't care if I spoil it for anybody. Yeah, like the whole movie takes place in the courtroom. The, you know, shout out to Ab. Da, 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 da. Not the whole, but I would say like 80%. I would say like 80%. Da, 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 da. Post. Now, what happens in that courtroom, I wouldn't spoil that. But the streets want a spoiler review. I just wait till it comes to streaming services. So zero character development, none. And the ending was really bad. I don't I wouldn't want to spoil the ending. Maybe like in a week or two, we can talk about it. It's a courtroom drama, basically. Like maybe in a week or two, we could talk about it. Like what I got out of the ending, because I got something out of the ending and then my girl got something different. And then I watched a YouTube video and he got something different. So like, I don't know. I would I would love to compare people's notes. I heard FD Fig said it was an F U to the incels. An F U to the incels. I don't know if it was that. I got more of the vibe that it was an F you to Hollywood. Which I mean, you could say that's some of it in there. Cause I think what it is is I think what he's probably trying to argue is the Joker's character incels incels kind of identify with that character. The idea of like loneliness. But like I don't think the movie directly was talking to them, maybe indirectly. I think it was more of an F you to Hollywood. I think the movie's more of an F you to corporate greed than anything. Uh, but nah, I think it deserves to be spoiled. The news penguin is episodes fire. I'm two episodes behind. I watched the Joker instead of the fucking penguin. I need to watch the penguin to cleanse my to cleanse my palate. Uh, uh, it was a fuck you to Warner Bros. Yeah, that's where I would agree. But like, I don't know. Like I said, maybe like in a week or two we could talk about it. But a bit, a bit, a bit. What if they intentionally made the movie bad so they wouldn't have to make a third? I think some of that is there. Like it's an intentionally bad movie. I think. Uh, the director definitely said there's not going to be a third. He didn't sound like he really wanted to do this one. Oh, there's definitely not going to be a third movie. Like, <laughs> if you see the second one, there's not. <laughs> the way it ends, it's definitely not going to be one. Uh, and check out uh, Transformers 1. Yeah, everybody keeps telling me to check it out. Unfortunately, the person uh, that I watch movies with doesn't want to watch. I don't think they want to watch that. I saw the ending. Yeah, if you see the ending, I don't think there's going to be a second, a third one. I mean. Most people hate because it was a musical, if we're being honest, though. I'm going to be honest. The musical stuff didn't bother me that much, and I don't like musicals. I do think some of the songs lasted too long, but some of the songs were very contextual to the movie, so it didn't really bother me that much. If anything, I think one of the problems with the musical aspect is I think the audio was poorly mixed. It was a lot of songs in there where the instrumental was higher than the vocals, so I couldn't understand what was being said. But the songs where I was able to comprehend, like hear and comprehend everything, it was very contextual to the movie. So like the musical part didn't really bother me that much. It, it was the plot. It was just like, what's the point of this movie, you know? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Most of the reviews was that the story was a mess. 
I agree. I agree. I agree. In about five to 10 years, someone's going to say this was great. I agree with that statement, too. I think in about five years, you're going to see some YouTube videos. Was the Joker 2 really that bad? And then after that, you're going to get an anthem. Was anthem really that bad? It wasn't really a musical. It had music in it, but technically not a musical. It was a musical. It was a musical. It wasn't like a song every five seconds, but it was enough. It was enough songs in that movie for it to be qualified as a damn musical. It was like five, six songs in there. It, it was enough in there for it to be qualified as a musical. Um, Sparking Zero tonight? No. Unfortunately, I wanted to. I also wanted to play Undisputed because I got a copy of that, but they moved the embargo to tomorrow, so I'm playing that tomorrow. Um, I thought my copy of Sparking Zero would be here, but Amazon fucked my order up. I had to custom out this morning. Um, it was like, what's the problem? It'll be here. They said maybe tomorrow. I don't know. But I bought the hundred dollar edition that comes with all the DLC, right? Tax right off. And they didn't deliver it. It hasn't even shipped. So then I, I, I talked to them this morning. I'm like, yo, the pre-order bonus was for three days early access and early access started today. They didn't even know. So they had to reimburse me at like a partial reimbursement. I was like, I should have got it off Best Buy and went and picked it up, bro. Cause you know i ain't going to GameStop. <laughs> yeah they sold so i might not i might not have dragon because i already paid for it i might not have it till like friday i don't know uh but at least i'm getting a refund a partial reimbursement on that part uh we hooping tonight probably probably not what was the point of the movie two location sets kept remind the audience what happened in joker one like all right yeah you know that's another problem with the movie too although i'd argue you probably shouldn't see two if you haven't seen one but if you haven't seen joker one there's no way you'll be able to really i mean you could follow it but you you won't be able to fully follow it uh the, the second movie um they did that with space marine paid for the gold edition it came on a regular edition release day they fucked it up bro sadly that's why digital is convenient i know right i know I'm not tripping. I'm not in a rush. I got too many games to play. I'm going to be honest. Uh, and y'all know, like, I'm not, like, super gung-ho. I've never been super gung-ho on um, Sparking Zero anyway. Like, I was looking forward to it, but not as much as, like, the anime community, like, the, the anime gaming community. It was, like, a game I wanted to try. And if I really liked it, I'll continue to play it. But, like, it's not. it wasn't, like, on the top of the list. So, like, I'm not tripping if they deliver it late because it wasn't, like, a big game for me anyway. That being said... My stance on Sparking Zero was I thought it would be a good game. I just didn't think it would hold my attention long term. But because I said that, a lot of anime weebs think that I think the game is trash. And I've never said that. I've been said, I was like, this looks like a good game. I just don't know if it's going to hold my attention. And I'm going to be honest, I don't know if it's going to hold y'all attention once the nostalgia wears off. That being said, the reviews are out and I'm happy to report they are good. Because we love to see when a game performs good. Uh, there's one 10, but it's mostly eights, a few nines, some sevens and a six. Um, most of these sites are not that reputable. I'm going to be honest. I was waiting for like some bigger sites. They haven't really dropped their reviews, but I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt. I believe where there's smoke, there's fire. It's probably true. The happy media. If I had to guess the happy medium, most people are probably going to give this like an eight based off of these scores. You said, what a transition. <laughs> I'm good at what I do, right? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> um, somebody got mad that IGN gave it an eight. Eight is a good score. It's a good fucking score, dude. Um, <laughs> so if you haven't, if you didn't know, the reviews dropped today, and it's been getting mostly positive reviews. Uh, all the anime nerds on my timeline have been super hyped playing it. I've seen people streaming it. Um, I seen a really interesting tweet from your shout to sensei with the sub from um, Damn, what's his name? Keefy Mighty Keefe, my bad. What did I say? Keefe Mighty Keefe. I meant to save it. Did it something about the mechanics? He said that's a great score. Listen, the best the best part about this getting about an average on about an eight on average. I think it's sitting at like an 84 Metacritic or something like that. The best part about this is it just further proves my point because the here's the anime community swears that I hate this game. I never said that I bought the game. I just said that I don't think it's going to hold my attention long term. There's a lot of games to play. That's really what it comes down to. Right. So I was like, I got to I you know I got to be all over the place. People want my opinions. That's my opinion on it. But what I will say, what makes me happy is not only is this game good and you the people who are looking forward to it. It sounds like you guys are going to really enjoy this game. 
what makes me happy most is it allows me to push my agenda even further and what's my agenda my agenda is black myth wukong will not be winning any game of the year awards zero it might get nominated for some things but it ain't winning no game of the year and black myth wukong fans aka this year's spider-man 2 fans have been annoying as fuck because they don't play no games i said let's wait and see since black myth wukong has come out we've got rave reviews for the new zelda space marine 2 metaphor that diablo dlc dragon ball i feel like i'm missing some, oh astrobot um what else am i forgetting i just named six games off the top of my goddamn head that all reviewed better <laughs> that all reviewed better i don't want to fucking hear it bro and then oh silent hill 2 remake yeah that one got rave reviews too i forgot to save that one that one got rave reviews um Black Myth Wukong didn't get nominated for Game of the Year for the Golden Stick Awards, so people are upset about that. But I'm like, let's wait for the Game Awards. The Game Awards is the big, the big one. The big one. That's the one that really matters. You got Dragon Age on the on um coming. But we talking about Dragon Ball. We talking about Dragon Ball. Uh yo, shout out to Panky with the sub. Appreciate it. I seen an interesting tweet from Mighty Keith. Uh, he tweeted this two hours ago. He said, Dragon Ball Sparking Zero has a lot of systems. This shit has way more depth than I thought. And that's coming from someone who played traditional fighters more than a decade. Now, I got to get my hands on the game to test this out and see if this is true. But this is what I was looking for. This is why when I would when I would say that I'm not super excited about Sparking Zero, I'm going to try it out. But I'm not, I don't know if it's going to hold my attention. Because from the eye test, Sparking Zero looks like Jump Force with better graphics. It looks like freaking... um ninja storm where you mash the x button and then you hold the trigger and do one of your four corners corresponding special moves nowhere in the previews did it say there was any depth to the game and that's what i've that's always been my argument i want to see more depth in arena fighters it doesn't have to be as deep as a traditional you know 2d fighter like street fighter or even 3d like tekken it doesn't have to be that deep but i just want to see the genre evolve i feel like we've been playing the same game over and over is that so bad is that so goddamn bad um jump force was fire though nigga be quiet no no it wasn't no it wasn't um yeah it's more complex than i thought you playing it you playing it you liking it so this tweet alone has me more interested in the game and now i'm looking more forward to it when i get my copy <laughs> say ban him give him a six we're not gonna ban him this is like this is the type of stuff i'm like yo the people who got to preview the game where was this what what are the mechanics that's going to separate the good from the bad players Versus a game where everybody just mashes their head against the X button and do, does one special move. You know what I'm saying? That's what I want to know of. So now I'm looking more forward to getting my hands on it and trying out the game and saying, oh, there is going to be a skills gap there. It doesn't have to be crazy. It could be easy to pick up hard to master type of game. You see what I'm saying? Um, so like this tweet got me more excited than any of the Dragon Ball Sparking videos that I've seen. Um... What else did I just say? Da, 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 da. Something else in regards. Another thing I'm interested in too, because a lot of people are streaming it. Have you seen, has anybody seen anybody comment on the online? How is it running? Does anybody know? Is the online smooth? That is what a guy. You got robot neck coat? Yo, shout out to Slim Reaper with the sub. This is the second time I've seen someone say Jump Force is fire. I think this is lying. Every five years when a game passes, y'all like to rewrite history um don't play on wi-fi it's pretty smooth online smooth so far no rollback it's good online is okay but no cross play i'm saying 50 50 it's okay so i'm not hearing nothing bad though that's good that's good no shout out to koto with the sub like i said if you're just coming into the stream i was supposed to have my copy of this game today but amazon fucked up my order i don't know when it's coming hopefully sometime this week but it's fine because we got other games to play tomorrow i'm probably gonna play undisputed um also, because I want to work on a video for that shit, too. Uh, so, yeah, that's the reviews for Sparking Zero. If you're looking forward to it, it's looking like it's looking good. We got another quality game. We got another quality game. Um, also came across this list for those who don't own the game yet for basically how much each character will cost. Because um, from my understanding, when you put it together, a team online, it'll cost 15 points. Damn, I can't zoom in on this shit. Oh, there we go. It'll cost you. You get 15 points to spend. And these are the different tiers. So like blue Vegito would cost 10. You have all these different tiers basically. So if you know, if you haven't gotten your hand on the game yet and you want to know, you're thinking about what kind of lineup when you want to run, keep in mind, you have 15 points to spend. This is how much each character is going to cost. Plan accordingly. 
I know you and your friends are going to be going at it all weekend when the game drops fully. I think Friday's like the, the official release, right? Or is it Thursday? Uh, you seen them making a new Alien Isolation? I'm not like a big Alien fan. It's not my cup of tea. Um, me personally, I'm looking for Farmer with a shotgun. Let's see. I, no, actually, I think I'm going to go with a team of Chaozu, um, a Cyberman, maybe Zarbon. Oh, no, they got Super Zarbon. Okay, yeah, yeah. Kui. Yeah, they got some top tier characters in here. Ranked only? It's for ranked only? Okay, that's good to know. That's good to know. If you're just playing private matches or... Or player matches, exhibition, you could pick whoever you want. Who the hell is Analiza? I don't know, bro. I don't know. But yeah, that's the list. If you guys actually want it here, if you want to take a look at it for yourself so you can kind of get an idea of what lineup you want to run, here is the link in the chat for you. There you go. Don't act like I ain't never hook you up. Um, other Dragon Ball sparking shit. Dragon Ball news we got for you. Um, we got a PlayStation 4 update here on the stream. We're very big on being, we're racist here on our stream. We're racist against people who own PS4s and refuse to upgrade if they have the funds. I'm not talking to the people that don't have the funds. I would never make fun of you because of that. I'm strictly talking about the people that do have the funds and refuse to upgrade, but then complain that gaming isn't changing, not failing to realize console parity is the reason. We can't push the PS4, the PS5 to its limits if you ref if you refuse to buy a PS5. It forces the developers to make those games for PS4, so now the PS5 is suffering as well. I'm gonna keep explaining this to you, dumbass people, until you finally understand it. Okay? I'm not talking about the people who can't afford it. Although if you can't afford it, you don't need to be in my stream. Keep your head down for a year or two. Get your bands up. Get on your purpose. You don't need to be playing Sparking Zero. You need to be sparking up a job resume. That being said. We do have an update. The PS4 community, they tried to play Sparking Zero. Somebody stuck a disc. This is not my caption. This is theirs because I don't want anything about picking. Somebody stuck the Sparking Zero disc in the PS4. And as you can see, Fallout 3 presumed. Fallout uh, New Vegas presumed. Somebody blew up an entire house trying to play Sparking Zero. So if you put a Sparking Zero disc in the PS4, it is going to spark your PS4 because this is a TI-83 computer. It's a TI-83 gaming calculator, okay? You niggas need to play Snake and Boobs, not Sparking Zero. It's a 12-year-old piece of hardware. You have a tween. That's right. And I said it earlier. I said what I said. I am a racist. I am a PS4 racist. I don't care who I make mad. You Hokage highlights niggas, stay mad. Um, watching you from a PS4, mods, push his hairline back. <laughs> Let me stop. <laughs> they threw in an EMP. <laughs> <laughs> like you got a damn dinosaur claw on your wall what is wrong with you niggas bro so that's my daily ps4 update as a friendly reminder um i believe i've tapped into a community that hasn't had a voice for them people who are tired of ps4 niggas um if you're somebody who's tired of ps4 niggas holding gaming back do me a favor follow me on twitter or follow me on instagram all my links are below whether you're on the youtube or uh, on twitch Follow me on social media. Shoot me a DM. Tweet at me. You can DM me on Instagram. My DMs are open to everybody. You can tweet me on Twitter. If you find something involving slander with the PS4, please send it to me. I will highlight it. Uh, I would give credit for this one, but about 15 of you niggas tweeted me this one. So niggas wanted to make sure people know that Sparking Zero will spark up the neighborhood on the PS4. We are not going to promote the poverty station anymore. Uh, shout out to Phantom Force with the sub. Appreciate it. We are now PS4 racist. Uh, what else we got? We got to make a slur for PS4 players. Yeah, it's called PS4 niggas. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, other Sparking Zero news that we got for you. This is more sad. It's not Sparking Zero. I think the timing on this was crazy. But the voice actor who did the narration for the English dub of Dragon Ball, he passed away today. So R.I.P. R.I.P. to Doc Harris. If you know what I'm talking about, it's the guy that used to do on the next episode of Dragon Ball Z. That guy? R.I.P., man. R.I.P. This man was a big part of everybody's childhood. I'd argue he was just as important to the show. I'm not going to say he was the most important thing, but he was an important part of the show because I'm not going to lie. At the end of every episode of Dragon Ball Z, when his voice came on and he gave a preview of the next episode, that had a nigga hyped to run home from school to see that next episode when it aired on Toonami. So we salute the service of Doc Harris. 
And we'll see you on the next episode of Dragon Ball Z. R.I.P. to one of the ghosts, man. We're going to show some love. We heard him his first and his last. Facts, facts, facts. Bringing back memories, man. R.I.P. Spam it up in the chat. Um, Other PlayStation news we got. Da -da 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 -da. There's a rumor going around. Take it with a grain of salt because I don't know who the hell this is. I saw it in the timeline. I'm going to entertain it for shits and giggles. Take this with a super grain of salt. Uh, Just some PlayStation news page. Da -da 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 but it's not officially confirmed uh finally we got a good remaster sony sony remaster uh rumor all greek mythology games from god of war are being developed and announced a remaster for march 2025 for the 20th anniversary of god of war the big remaster collection includes one two three and then all the psp games plus ascension so basically every game leading up to god of war 2018 will be in this collection and remastered for the ps5 how are y'all feeling about this do you would, would you want this I, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I do get tired of all the remasters and shit like that, but I did not play every God of War game, so I might pick up the collection. I, I might pick this up. If it's properly done, where they give a visual overhaul to every version of the game, including the PSP ones, and they update the camera, like they actually give quality of life changes because I didn't play every one, I would probably pick this up. Uh, I'll get it when it's on sale. Facts, Keith, facts. I don't know if I would pay 70 for this, but maybe 40, maybe 40, catch it on a sale, you know, Black Friday or something like that. Um, if I can get it on one disc, I'll cop. I don't see why it wouldn't fit on one disc if, if, if it's Blu-ray. Yeah, a little Steam sale, something like that. Just keep in mind that this is a rumor that he tweeted. I don't know how reputable per this person is. He doesn't state where he's getting this info. This, and this is Twitter, by Elon's Twitter, by the way. So take this with a super grain of salt. None of this is confirmed. I couldn't find any articles on this. Um, but that being said, if it turns out to be true, remember what you heard it here first on my stream, baby. Um, and then what else I got for you is Ubisoft exclusive. Currently, they are aspiring over at the Ubisoft offices. Their stocks are at an all time low. Matter of fact, let's look them up today. Ubisoft. Let's. Uh, they're down to another two percent. Uh, Ubisoft stocks at their peak were trading for one hundred and forty dollars a share. They are currently going for $295. Um, what's the name? Just to give you an idea of how bad Ubisoft is doing right now. <laughs> and that's due to failures such as Skull and Shit. Um, what's the name? That Avatar game. Star Wars was a failure to them. They've just been putting out a lot of mid. They've been putting out a lot of mid. Uh, and because of that, they recently delayed Assassin's Creed Shadows because they know now more than ever they need a winner. They need to generate some revenue, especially because we, we read another article last week that the developers over at Ubisoft are frustrated. They want to raise. Um, they feel like they're overworked. They're not being paid uh, well. And I said, I was like, how the fuck y'all going to get a raise if y'all ain't making no money? Your company is sharing for $2.00. Your company is trading for $2 a share. Y'all are not generating any revenue. I want to see y'all get paid because I, I think people, you know, should get a livable wage. But right now, anyways, what's the solution? What's the solution for Ubisoft making more money? Apparently, we're getting an Assassin's Creed Black Flag remake. We first got wind of Assassin's Creed Black Flag's remake earlier this year. And information sent to Insider Gamer suggested the game could be coming sooner than you might think. When rumors of the Assassin's Creed Black Flag remake began to circulate on the internet, many, including ourselves, assumed that the game would still be some years away from releasing. However, new details and documentation on the game sent to Insider Gaming under the condition that it does not go public suggested the game is well into development and could be released much sooner than we all thought. In fact, prior to the recent Assassin's Creed Shadows delay, which is understood to have affected the Assassin's Creed pipeline of content, the Assassin's Creed Black Flag remake, codenamed Obsidian, was to be released around November 2025, which would be around the same time that the series multiplayer offering, codenamed Invictus, is to be released. If you haven't been in my streams, Invictus is another Assassin's Creed game rumored to be coming out. It's a spinoff title. It's supposed to be some type of multiplayer Fallout Guys inspired thing. Honestly, if this is real, you're fucking crazy, Ubisoft, but whatever. Let's keep reading. Uh, Insider Gaming understands that this is part of Ubisoft's ramp up strategy for Assassin's Creed series, which will see around 10 Assassin's Creed titles of various lengths. And make a new fucking game, dude. They're just yapping at this point. Um, this news is crazy to me. Let me tell y'all why. You guys spent hundreds of millions of dollars putting together Skull and Shit. It fucking sucks. Nobody bought it. It died within a week. And then within the same year, just a few months later, we're finding out 
that an Assassin's Creed Black Flag remake is coming, you wouldn't have to do this remake if you just made Assassin's Creed Black Flag multiplayer. That's what Skull and Shit should have been. A game where you and the homies get to get on a boat, sail the seven seas, explore islands, loot camps together, doing stealth using the blunderbuss, fight other people's ships, jump on their ship, loot them, fight them, get into sword fights. That's what we were supposed to be doing. Put a story in there. And I said, and I said, this is why they need to add me to the consulting. I said to make it even cooler, this could have been a straight up spinoff game instead of its own thing. They could have just called it Black Flag 2 or some shit like that, where it takes place in the Assassin's Creed universe in the same timeline as Black Flag, but you're just playing your own created pirate. And you even get to get missions where you work alongside the Templars and the and the and the Assassins. And it has its own unique story. Cameos from characters you love, unique mechanics. What the fuck is wrong with y'all? It's like y'all are afraid of money. <laughs> what if they're trying to use skull and bone assets for this to save money? Well, that's not possible because skull and bone assets are Assassin's Creed Black Flag assets. So they're going to reuse assets that are assets on assets from another generation. <laughs> Scurvy DLC. This shit is crazy, man. So I'm not saying this is true. This is all a rumor. Take it all with a grain of salt. Just remember where you heard it here first on my stream. November 2025 is the rumor is when this will come out. My question to the chat is, are you interested in a Black Flag remake? Because I don't give a fuck. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I've never been a big fan of this Assassin's Creed. But it's because I don't like pirates. So, uh, no. Y'all don't want to hear them um, them HD sea shanties? What else I got for y'all? Is that it on this batch? That shit was ass. It definitely it was an ass. I, I would say Black Flag just wasn't for me. But I would never call it ass. I understand why people like it. I wouldn't call it ass, though. Uh, last piece of news. And why the fuck does this exist news? Um, the actor who plays Obi-Wan Kenobi is exploring ideas with Disney for a season two of Kenobi. Yes, that five, that six out of 10. They're talking about bringing it back for season two. He adds that he wants to wear the Clone Wars armor and have more flashbacks with Hayden Christensen. Translation, they want to explore, they want to exploit nostalgia for the, the episode one, two, and three tr uh, trilogy nostalgia. They want to exploit Darth Vader more. My thing is like your entire mission was you were in Tatooine, however the fuck you that nigga wasn't in Tatooine, that nigga was in Vegas. That nigga was in the middle of Arizona, hanging out with cactuses and shit with his binoculars, watching Luke grow up. That was your mission. And I don't know how you're gonna make that more interesting in season two. Uh <laughs> Bakersfield, right? We don't want to see season two in Bakersfield. Like I like there's it's hard to make that more interesting. And then on top of that, like in the show, he kind of was like out of shape. He wasn't training. What mission is, what is he going to do? Just let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it fucking go. Stop milking Star Wars. Your only hope is fucking Cal Kestis. God damn it. Um, he, he just got the a divorce, so he needs the money. Yo, chill out. <laughs> Chat, chill out. Yo, shout out to Young Champagne with this up. Chill out. Joker 2 actually ended up earning less than Morbius in the film's domestic opening weekend. God damn, bro. I say it ain't so. Which is crazy because I think the Joker 2 is a better movie than no, the Joker 2 sucks. But Morbius, Morbius is a movie that is like flat out terrible. There's nothing redeeming about it, in my opinion. It's flat out fucking terrible. There are some redeeming things about this movie. Like, so that's crazy that Morbius outsold it. But I mean, what can you do? It I'm not gonna lie, it is, if you think about it, it is hard to compete with 